Well, welcome everybody to the to the webinar understanding corporate options in uh, conversational AI. Um, my name is uh, Pau Cerda, and uh, I am one of the of the co-founders of Outbuys. I will introduce you the uh, the webinar of today. Let's see if I can move page. Yeah. So today the topic is is about um, conversational AI, uh, which is on uh, one of the or will be one of the hottest years uh, topics in the coming years. Um, it's within the whole track of of uh, data and artificial intelligence, right? And it's about uh, it's about messaging, uh, digital dialogues, uh, about uh, digital assistant, chatbots, WhatsApp, etc. Right. Um, in the end, what it means is to try to digitalize um, a human conversation. Right. That's the that's the core of the proposition. And there is a lot of money in it. There's a lot of money because um, just take, for example, if you work in telecom, the the amount of money we spend in call centers that uh, could be partially. Totally, who knows? Maybe one day we'll be totally substituted by by bots, right? So there's a lot of money who is involved in that, um, and and uh, we are, I think, in the in the in the in the new era, right? Uh, regarding how all all of this uh, is going to transform business, um, we'll have another webinars for our topics like cloud or like uh, blockchain or security. But today we want to focus on that conversationally. Like how do we digitalize human conversations? And for that we have. Invited Olaf. Hi, Olaf. So hi, Paul. So um, well, I mean, afterwards you you will have your your own introduction, right? Um, let me just give you briefly um, a few notes of, of of why we invited Olaf, right? Um, Olaf is one of the most knowledgeable um, persons in in Germany about conversational AI. Um, he has advised companies uh, such as uh, Dutch Telecom which is one of the largest uh, telcos in, in Europe and, and in the world. And then he has been CEO and CEO of several uh, AI startups. So very deep knowledge. I think, I think you will enrich, enrich us with, with, with all your, your, your knowledge, right? Um, mm -hmm. Just let me, before, before handing over to you, Olaf, let, let me just uh, give a couple of slides for, for Outbuys, just introduce the people that, that, that what we are doing. Um, so Outbuys is a, is a platform for independent experts and uh, for, so for freelancers, um, very focused on the, on the high end and very focused on the, on the digital economy. Um, we operate globally. We operate in, in, uh, in Europe. We operate in Africa. We operate in the Middle East. In Europe, we are quite strong in, in Germany, in the UK, in Spain. Um, we have a very high response rate, 48 hours response, very fast. And, and, and what's really new for us is the whole, for, the, for the market is the whole um, approach that we, got, that we give to the front end. So people can directly search for their own profiles, right? They don't have to interact. I mean, we try to digitalize the whole process end to end, right? I mean, it's quite, it's quite uh, innovative if you, if you want to have a look. Um, the most important though, it's, it's not the platform, but it's the people as always, right? Um, so we are, we are really um, obsessed about quality, about how we can ensure we deliver the best quality. We have the best experts, uh, how we can find people like, like Olaf, right? Um, and we do that with basically with, with two methods, uh, right? On one side, the technological aspect of it. So we have a set of algorithms that do the, does the, that do the matching and by which we extract some CVs, but on top, on top sorry, we have, a, we have a network of, of what we call um, scouts, um, like sort of a gurus, who is people who is very good on a, very good on a, on a certain topic and who is able to, to do um, interviews, right? And to assess the, the hard skills, the content skills of a certain person, right? So, so maybe, I don't know, if, if there's somebody who is very good on, or who wants to get into a conversational project, maybe Olaf is the one who will give the opinion saying, yeah, this guy is the proper one, right? So the, 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 the balance between both, between the human and the, and the technology is, is what makes us quite proud of the, of the quality that we are able to provide. So while um, I think today is not, it's not a day of Outbuys, it's a day of Olaf. So I think I will stop sharing screen and, uh, and hand it over to, to Olaf and, and start this, this webinar, which is 
I'm sure that it will be very interesting. So Olaf, I just stop stop sharing now. Okay, mm -hmm. I think I stop it, and I hand it over to you. Okay, many thanks. Can you see my screen, Paul? Yes, perfect. And perfect. can you see that the um, slides are moving? Yes, it's okay, working. Great. Okay, then um, many thanks, um, Paul, for the introductory word. Um, yeah, I'm very happy um, to be here and to share uh, my insights and um, my experience. So really to make you um, or bring you a better understanding of the corporate options in conversational AI. And the reason um, why I'm well prepared to do that is um, yeah, that I have many fold experience in this area. So in 2016, I started on the client side um, where we um, did a global AI provider scouting um, already in 2016. Um, and uh, part of that was um, really assessing um, the quality of conversational AI and chatbot providers and voice technology providers um, back then in 2016 and 17, and um, we also did some implementations. So in this global scouting, I think we had more than 50 um, providers in this conversational AI area. In 2012, uh, 2018, I moved then um, to Passage AI, a conversational AI provider. So I moved to the provider side, um, became head of Europe, um, and yeah, Passage AI uh, is headquartered in the US. Um, was headquartered in the US um, with clients like Daimler, TUI, um, Bridgestone, Bank of America, um, Coles, and many others. Uh, early 2020, Passage AI got acquired by ServiceNow, a very large IT service management provider. And since then, um, I um, yeah, uh, did um, advising or I advised um, companies on conversational AI and voice technology projects um, with my um, company, Hayden Combinat. So what I have prepared for today, um, I have structured it in three areas. First is, um, yeah, let's explore or recap what is conversational AI. Then the second part is what is good to know. Um, so the questions that you should um, answer quite early. And the third part is, looking at the provider uh, market specifics. So let's start with what is conversational AI and Pau already um, mentioned that. So at least my definition is automating cognitive tasks via chatbots or voice assistants that otherwise need human intelligence to be carried out. So we will see other um, chatbots or voice um, assistants that are not aiming that high um, but I think um, the general user experience and exa um, um, uh, experience nowadays is really to automate cognitive tasks. If I um, say conversational AI, um, later on in this webinar, I include voice. Um, later, I will um, share, you some, uh, share with you some insights on the technical differences between um, text and voice. In this area, um, at the beginning, maybe it's still good to highlight that there's a um, that voice and text um, are in different uh, maturity areas. So if, if we have this hype cycle, the Gartner hype cycle has five areas, and I only have highlighted here two of them. Um, we see voice assistants um, that really are at the peak of inflated expectations. So every Buddy um, thinks that um, uh, they should go into voice assistance, and nobody's really, or most of the people are really not really sure what to do um, in this area and what is needed um, there. So we will dig deeper into that a little bit later. Um, if we talk about text chatbots, um, we have the region where we um, have the slope of enlightenment. So we see a lot of mature, very mature use cases. We see a lot of companies and providers that already have um, use cases in this area or solutions in this area that are really mature. Of course, not all of them. And it uh, sometimes makes the difference what language you talk about or um, what specific use case to talk about. But I think the general um, 
distinction here is really that chatbots are much more mature than voice assistants. So let's have a look at the um, use cases and we see a very large spectrum. Um, starting with help desk and customer service. For example, if you have a problem with your um, invoice and you want to ask um, questions on your invoice, that's something that you can automate or also um, reclaims or IT service management, um, IT incidents, that's a big part here. So um, if you have problems with your computer, you are calling your help desk and you can automate um, most of that also. The second part is e-commerce and voice commerce. Um, and after this slide, I will present you a um, video with such a use case where you can search and purchase a product or a service. The third area, surveys. We see a lot of um, um, surveys um, from market research institutes, but also from internal um, process optim um, automation tasks. So for example, if you have um, digital products, um, digital projects, um, where you need to assess if you uh, need to involve a data privacy officer or compliance officer or to do a data risk assessment. Um, this is something that you can also partially or fully automize. Search means um, product search, so search in product catalogs um, or in user manuals. We have done that a lot with Passage AI. Um, and of course, you can search also in a non conversational manner. But here, the interesting part is that you really can um, get to personalized search results. Um, another part is device management, where it's simply about turning on or off the light in your smart home or um, turning on or off the um, music in your car. So, um, yeah. yeah, that's-, that's oh, 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 Olaf, that, yeah? sorry, just mm -hmm. one question to, inter to interrupt you. Sure. If, if you would have to choose one of these use cases, which ones are the ones who are more uh, mature? Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a good question. Um, many things, I think, in help desk and customer service, we have seen a lot of providers already um, um, yeah, bringing great results. So um, here the maturity level is, is very high depending on the provider and depending on the language, as I said, um, also e-commerce service. I think in all of these areas, if we talk about text, um, it's really something that is um, very mature. Voice is a different thing. And um, maybe also interesting, the tricky part for voice is that once we see that a startup is really um, yeah, um, having, having done some substantially new and good things, um, the tricky part is that they got acquired by big tech companies or by big companies. We have seen that last year with Apprenti, um, a US startup um, that was acquired by uh, McDonald's to automate the um, yeah the um, ordering process in the drive-throughs. Mm -hmm. Good. So let's now move to the um, video. <clears throat> what I present you here is a um, shopping assistant on Apple Business Chat. Business Apple Business Chat is the native chatbot experience on iOS devices, so iMessage. Um, it was done in um, March 2019 already um, for Colts. Colts is a US um, fashion retailer and e-commerce provider. And the system um, that were used was Passage AI. And you will see that um, a customer or a user can search for products in different ways. Um, you can describe um, what you want to have in a positive way or also in a negative way, meaning if you search for um, a blue trouser, for example, um, the negative description is I'm searching for a dark colored trouser, but not in black. So we we'll get dark um, colored trousers, um, but not in black. Um, I think what we will see here is um, also picture upload. Um, so let's have a look.
So we see here that um, they could um, upload a video and then get some recommendations in this direction. Yeah, quite often you um, can use uh, buttons to go forward as here, but you can also type in um, what you want to say. And here we see a spell checker. So this is, and then um, you can also pay it with Apple Pay. Of course, it's working with this Apple business chat. Then um, if you have purchased it and um, get a business um, payment notification, then you can also search for the nearest location by a zip code to pick up the clothes then. interesting yeah and um, also here um, what you need to model is the handover to a real person um, although it's just a um, for demo purposes in this um, video but it's always good because sometimes people want to talk to um, real humans and then it's good to have um, this possibility or this option inside your system and this is just here for a test so, and I think what we have seen here is that you can combine different um, use cases or different functionalities. So you can search for products, but you can also um, then pay, you can search for um, nearest locations and stuff like this. Um, this one was very, I would say already conversational, um, but what we need to understand is that um, we have different types, and I would say we have three different types of approaches. And the first, um, the lowest, um, from a technical perspective, is the command style, I would say. Um, so command style is press one or press two. And all of us have experienced that when we call the customer um, service hotline, um, and we, will, um, we, were, we are get asked um, to press one if we have a problem with our invoice or press two for other topics then we are just pressing two. The user benefit is not that high, no information is provided, but companies use it for streamlining um, the incoming process. That's good. Um, the second part or the second approach is FAQ matching. Um, that means we have predefined answers and questions or question and answer pairs. And um, the customer can say, I have a problem with my invoice and then um, he or she gets um, the relevant answer on that. But again, it's not really providing um, the highest user benefit because only if you are able to individualize your personal message or the recommendation, um, this is really um, what we see um, today as the user expectation and that can only be matched with a conversational style. So now let's understand how this works technically. I think this is also interesting. Um, let's start with text. So we have here a user and the user types in a question. For example, um, I'm searching for a new iPhone in black. And then um, this um, is transferred to the, to the system, to the chatbot. And here, bear with me, it's really a simplified version that you just get the idea how this works. So there's a natural language understanding component. Um, and first of all, um, what is done is named entity recognition. So in this sentence, um, I am searching for a new iPhone in black. iPhone is an entity, um, is a um, smartphone, it's a brand. Um, and black is an attribute that um, can be shared across many entities. So that's done here. And um, quite often we see a <clears throat> part of sentence analysis. That means 
It's a difference if I say my name is John Black or I want to have a new iPhone in black. So in both sentences, we see black, but because of the different structure of the sentence or the different place in the sentence, um, the word black has a different meaning. And that's something that we can enhance here um, yeah, to make better sense of that. Then this is handed over to the text dialogue manager um, where we have an intent classifier and an intent is a predefined purpose of the user that we think the user wants to achieve. Meaning here the intent um, is the user wants to buy or wants to get information about a smartphone. So um, that is classified then and um, the system understands that there's a gap because there's more information needed that the user has not provided yet. So um, that means the um, system then asks back a question. Okay, I've understood um, iPhone in black, a new one, but um, what is the capacity you, you want? So is it 128 of 256 gigabyte and so on? And then everything um, is going in this direction until all gaps are filled and then an information or a recommendation can be provided. That's, that's text. If we then switch to voice, um, in general, it stays the same. Um, the general approach, I would say, um, what we have is, of course, the user now um, speaks. That means we will um, need to transcribe the speech to text. This is a component here, then transfer the text. Then the system is doing um, also what it has done, uh, what it has done with text. And then in the end, it needs to be synthesized again. So the text needs to be converted into speech. These two components are often called ASR, automatic speech recognition. That means, um, oh yeah, that's uh, simply the name. Um, and um, there are providers for that that you um, need to use. Um, however, there's another distinction um, that needs to be clear um, and it's the voice dialogues it needs to be more guided and um, you need to do more repetitions and more guidance and more um, confirmations. Um, because if you have a text chatbot, you simply can scroll and see what you or what the system has um, asked or has um, answered. And that's not possible in voice. So therefore you need to repeat more often um, and confirm more often what, um, that you are still on the right, in the right direction. And you need to um, be sure that you are able to um, change some things, some information that has been provided beforehand by the user. And that's the tricky part really. And that's the reason why um, voice is still on experimentation level. However, there's another option for voice and it is if um, you are especially interested in device management, um, then there is a different ap approach and this um, approach is really pushed forward by one um, Canadian startup called Fluent AI and they're using the speech to intent classifier as they say it. So they're not transcribing the speech to text but they're using the sound as is, and then they are classifying it um, to the intent. Great. Then um, let's, ah, sorry, maybe um, what I forgot here. Um, what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is that it only works with a limited set of vocabulary per use case. Um, and the advantage is that um, it is very robust to um, background noise. So um, that is the problem here. Um, if you have a lot of background noise um, that ASR might um, not work too well and then all um, your system is not working um, uh, well enough. And that's what you can manage um, with a different approach here. Great. Um, now let's come to the channels and the interfaces. Um, where you can put your chatbot or your voice assistant on. Um, you have messenger platforms. Um, I already mentioned Apple Business Chat, which is the 
um, native chatbot experience on iOS devices. And the same is here with Google um, RSC. It's the native chatbot um, experience with um, Android devices. We have WhatsApp here, um, Facebook, Slack, there are a lot more. Now the channel, website and app, clear. Also devices, um, or the speakers here, it's um, um, Amazon. You have a lot of other um, technical devices here that can um, be used. Also car, washing machine, whatever. Um, and the IVR, so um, use the um, hotline um, to power your voice assistant. Great. Yeah, Olaf, sorry to, in mm -hmm. to interrupt you. I had, I had one question regarding this. Sure. Um, what, 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 I mean, when I see these channels, I mean, I had now, I was talking with a, with a media company that just switched on the, the WhatsApp channel, right? And mm -hmm. they were really surprised about the amount of traffic that came out of, mm -hmm. of WhatsApp. So I wanted to ask which, which one of these channels in the end uh, works better? And, 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 and what's the role of WhatsApp in, in all of this? Okay, um, cool question. Many thanks. Um, for that power. Um, first of all, I think it's good to um, follow your customers. So really understand your customer. So where's the customer? And um, if all your customers are used to um, raise questions on your website, you should present your chatbot also on your website. That's clear. I think this is the first thing, um, really follow your customer. What you described is also follow your customer, um, but the other way around. If you see that WhatsApp has such a large um, user base, um, you can also go, um, of course, there. And uh, um, we see a lot of uh, companies going in this direction. Um, all of these messenger platforms have um, different guidelines, what you can do on this. Um, so they are very restrictive on um, using it um, for sales purposes. That's something that um, you need to know beforehand. And especially for WhatsApp, um, um, it is that you're using mobile phone numbers there. Um, um, and if you want to use it at scale, then um, you need to balance the capacity because if you um, yeah, have, I don't know, 1,000 or 10,000 users, um, per minute or per hour, um, that's really something that you need to be able to scale that. Um, and WhatsApp is not doing that and you cannot do it. So there are specialized providers in between in the sandwich position. Um, there are many uh, messenger people, 360 dialogue I have worked with, um, but there are many of, of um, such um, intermediates there. Um, it's good to understand a little bit what they're offering, what they're charging, that's a little bit tricky sometimes, but in general, you need for WhatsApp, you need somebody in between to balance um, the capacity. Yeah? Has it answered your question? Yes, yes, perfect. Okay, Thank cool. you. Um, so the first part is now um, over. It was, what is the um, technology? What is the use case? What is What are the channels and stuff like this? Now let's move to the, um, Second part, the questions that are good to know or get good to answer as early as possible. So first of all, the question of why. Um, maybe that sounds a little bit strange, but quite often um, after having done a proof of concept with the innovation team, um, you get the question of from the business side, why are we doing this? And Therefore, it's really good to understand that or to answer that as early as possible. If we start here, if you um, talk about help desk, customer service or surveys, um, you're always aiming for a cost reduction potential that should be quite large. I think this is a no brainer. Um, the revenue side, the revenue potential um, can also be large if you um, go into e-commerce use cases. Um, we've seen a really good acceptance. And the reason for that is that you really get um, an individual search result or recommendation that are really um, great here and really um, um, yeah, pushing the user benefit forward. I've put voice 
commerce into brackets because remember the ASR solution that I mentioned, if you do um, the voice, um, there are specialized providers in this and that um, and this comes with a cost. So, and the costs are not decreasing. So they're staying the same per minute, per 1000 um, uh, API calls or whatever. So meaning um, it's not declining. And if you operate on a low margin, um, then it can be tricky and it can um, really burn your business case. Um, that's something that might be tricky and I have seen some providers um, that yeah, wanted to sell vegetables or so via voice commerce. And that's tricky because um, the business case is really not there. Um, if you have search device management, I also have seen a lot of um, use cases or um, installations focusing on brand awareness or marketing or so. Yes, but quite often, if it's getting too expensive, um, it's really like the question is, why are you doing that? Um, so therefore, define what you do, why you do it, and really challenge that. If you have done that, then um, you need to get into um, data. And you don't need to read out the little words here. Um, I don't say that you should use this or that you need to use this. This is a canvas um, created by um, 33A. It's a um, AI, AI design sprint agency from Copenhagen. Um, I have worked with them a lot when I was at, with Passage AI. Um, um, and it's quite simple. So you only need to define um, the data that you need in order to realize your chatbot. And if you have written that down, um, then it's also good to understand if the or define if the data is internal or external, if the data is structured, um, if it comes from Excel or um, other data sources that are really structured, or if it's unstructured, if it's coming from different uh, places and stuff like this. And in the end, um, always the question, who has the internal data? So who's your stakeholder in talking to? If you have managed to understand your data situation, continue with your IT systems. Again, um, the databases, which systems are in place, which interfaces do they have, uh, which persons are in charge. Again, your stakeholders. Um, the question is how do you assess the data? And very important, the timelines. Um, um, or, um, the question, how up to date does your data need to be for your use case? And the question is, are your IT systems delivering that? So for example, if you want to build a voice commerce um, a use case, um, you need to access, uh, assess your, um, um, your inventory system. So, and if it's not real time, um, then it's quite hard um, to build a voice commerce use case out of this. So that is really um, good to know at the beginning. And then if you want to deploy it, um, the question is who owns the page or the system you want to deploy it to and who controls the page. I have quite often um, spoken about stakeholders. It's very important for such projects to understand your stakeholders and especially involve as early as possible people from data privacy, compliance officers, and um, in most cases, also the works council members. So that is really important, at least in Germany. Um, if you talk about use cases in customer service or so, it's really important to get them on board as early as possible. There, there might be others. Um, if you have customer service use cases, of course, you need to define more customer service stakeholders. So that's um, the questions you need to answer as early as possible. Data, IT systems, and, before, and stakeholders, and beforehand, um, the question of why are you doing this? You need to have a sound business case on that.
Paul, if you don't have any questions, let's move to the provider um, side. So the yeah. provider market um, specifics. <clears throat> and um, yeah, it's just exemplary, but you will find a lot of reports there. So we really see a lot of providers. And the interesting part with all of these reports or most of the reports are that they quite often are not up to date because really the um, provider landscape is, is moving very fast. And sometimes it's, um, I have seen reports that are um, quite misleading. And the reason for that is that um, sometimes the people that create such reports don't or are, are, are not able to dig deeper into the um, specifics of use cases or what the um, provider is really doing from the technology side. So that's sometimes misleading. I think um, for this, it's really good to understand that we have we see very low entry barriers. So in the end, every developer can say, hey, I have built a chatbot. Um, remember, the if you have such a um, command style approach, you can build that in, in minutes or hours. Um, and in fact, we see really a lot, and I would say too many providers out there and with different approaches. And that's really making um, the landscape, the provider landscape for conversational AI a little bit tricky. Um, what I have done in the past um, to structure that a little bit um, is I have defined three clusters um, and I call this generic AI provider clusters. And um, the disclaimer is, it is not that one cluster is better than the other, they're simply different. And it might be that for your use case, it's interesting to, to, to find a provider from one cluster and in another use case, it might be in a different cluster. So that's not the point here. The point is um, it's also working for conversational AI and startups, of course, um, that you will have different questions and different situations that you need to think about. Let's start with this AI as a service providers, the universal providers. Um, in this cluster, I would put um, IBM Watson, I would put Microsoft Cognitive Services, and in conversational AI, I would also put Rasa into that. Rasa is an open source um, tool, tool set system, um, where you can also um, get an enterprise license. So what are the advantages? The advantages are that they are offering a standard solution. You know what you get, and um, they will survive the next years. And that's really important. Um, to understand because the idea or the vision of most startups are to go IPO. But the reality is that they die or they get acquired. So, and if the acquirer, um, uh, the idea of the acquirer can be in two directions. The first dire um, direction is the customer base is so interesting that they want to keep the customer base and really want to continue with this business. That's cool, and then you don't have a problem. But we see a lot of use, um, a, a lot of situations where the acquirer is not interested in the customer base, but in the technology in the IP. And then they're um, neglecting the customer base or they let the business die because they want to have the best people work on a different thing now. And that's really the interesting part or other way around the advantage of these big service providers, um, you will not find it or most like, likely not find it there. The I, I guess, sorry, Olaf, to, yeah. to interrupt you. I, I guess that's the case of, of the company that you mentioned before, right? That was acquired by McDonald's, right? That they in the end. Yeah, yeah, they, they, yeah. Exactly, right? They focus yeah. on those. And, and, and just another question, how, how do you know that one of these one of these providers is a state of the art. Yeah, let, let me let me come to this. Um, can I give me five yeah. more minutes and then <laughs> ask the question again? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, so um, you have read that, but I, I was not that fast. So um, the challenge here is, is it really state of the art? Um, 
And with the big ones um, like uh, Microsoft, for example, they have a very good research department for sure. Um, but the decision to bring that into a product is also heavily influenced by um, uh, legal persons or by business persons. And if they don't see a big market or if they see that they um, uh, substitute a big um, market, uh, they potentially will um, wait a little bit. And that is the reason why um, sometimes we see that it's not state of the art. Um, also, there's significant adaptation needed if you don't have the common use case. If you have some um, individualization that might be tricky as well. And the pricing models are not flexible because you sign um, a general frame uh, uh, agreement and then um, you need to live with this. So in the end, you don't have any negotiation power um, for your project um, with, the, with this cluster. Coming to the second cluster, um, conversation AI startups. The advantage is showing innovative approaches, agile working mode, desire to deliver, at least until they have the contract or until they have made the installation. So um, if we have people from the banking industry or insurance industry or in general people um, from companies that have a 24 seven approach in customer service, for example, um, startups uh, are not so used um, to build a service organization. So they are very good at scaling, but sometimes they are lacking to really build a service organization that can um, fulfill such 24 seven approaches because you want to make sure that everything is working properly. Also, if it's on a Sunday um, and if the answer from the um, CEO is you can always ring me, um, that's not scaling. Yeah, um, so therefore, um, that's maybe also um, one of the challenges here. Again, state of the art. I will come to that, Pau. Um, solution, the question is, is the solution adaptable to the desired use case? Sometimes they don't want to change that or sometimes they cannot change that. Um, we need to look into that. And the question, is the solution already mature enough? The th um, ah, maybe just to name two, but I don't say that they are the only ones in Germany, at least, um, EVOT 7 or Ultimate AI. Um, they are from Sweden, Norwegen, somewhere. Um, uh, Scandinavian. Um, yeah, um, they are um, quite knowledgeable or they are um, well known, I would say, also because of funding rounds, uh, latest funding rounds. But there are a lot of more, and it's really really specific to the use case um, what you um, to whom you should talk to. So third um, cluster providers facing innovators dilemma and um, here in conversational AI I would put um, CX company and um, maybe nuance into that. I don't say that they're not good. I don't say um, that you should not go with them but what I say is um, you should really understand what they are offering. Of course, they have a vast experience with the industry and with the use cases and a ton of references. But the question is again, is it really state of the art um, or is the AI part in this just marketing add on? So how well is it connected? And um, Pao, now I uh, come to your question. Um, what is state of the art? Um, yeah. <clears throat> You need to understand um, what is state of the art, meaning um, where is the research at the moment. You also need to understand, does it make sense um, to use that already or should you wait a little bit? Um, that's a little bit um, more on a the theoretical um, uh, perspective. Quite often it's really, you need to try that out <laughs> with proof of concept. And um, one example, um, you, you can, also, of, of course, ask. So one example is we have done a proof of concept with some providers. And um, then in the end, everything looks fine. We, the scope was quite um, small, I would say. And we, we provided some uh, example data and some example intents. Um, and everything looks fine, looked fine. And then 
my question was, okay, um, if we have an iPhone 11 now, and we know that the iPhone 12 is coming, who needs, who needs to do what now? So, and um, the other provider said nothing. So, because we are treating this, this as an entity, and if you have um, an entity list or we get it from your system, we don't care um, if it's now another iPhone um, than 12. But there was one provider that says, yeah, we need to update our language model. And I said, okay, um, so you're not treating that um, iPhone as an entity. And wow. they said, yeah, but it's not a problem. It's not a problem, we, we, we do that for you. Don't worry about that. But I said, okay, but think that through. What about um, colors? Colors are attributes. Um, and if now the new iPhone 12 comes in purple, <laughs> yeah, they, so the message of this is um, that this was actually um, when we not or when we um, not continued with them because of that reason because you have so many updates on entities on attributes and stuff like this and it's really not working if you are not able to um, work in this approach and there I would say okay this was really the point where it was not state of the art. Understood. Very okay. clear. I think the jump on off. Of the iPhone is quite insightful. insightful. Yeah, okay. Good. So, um, as I said, I don't say go with this cluster or that cluster. I say just be aware that you need to raise different questions um, for different clusters. If you now go into the selection procedure, the scouting, um, start with a long list, um, go and search the, um, the reports, ask for recommendations, um, see what your competitors are already doing, put everything on the long list, and then um, create a first short list. And I would say it's a good indication to have seven to 15 providers, depending on your use case. And then of course you need to define um, already your use case, you need to ask the specific questions, what is really important for you. For example, the service concept, if you really demand 24 seven um, from a service perspective, um, that's a different one uh, you need to put that into because it will really um, narrow down um, the providers that want to do it or can do it. Then you're sending out requests for proposals um, and you're doing face-to-face -face interviews and um, it's really, needed to have experts there really with deep technical knowledge that are able really to raise the um, interesting questions. And I would say in this funnel, it's all about de-scoping. Yeah? It's not selecting the best one, it's really deselecting the ones you don't want to go with. And then in the end, um, do a proof of concept, let's say with two to three. And it's really about um, then, um, having a um, scoped use case that uh, is, uh, shows you the indication if somebody can do what you want to have. And that's what you should do there. So we are almost at the end. The key takeaways from this seminar, I would say you should understand that there are different maturity levels for text and voice. And voice needs much more pre-thinking on technology and dialogues. So it's really there, remember the hype cycle, it's really different there, the expectations are so high, but the technical um, requirements or the, the um, what you need to fulfill really a use case there from a technology perspective, it's really different. As I said, define business goal and stakeholders as early as possible. That's also very important create a proper understanding of your data and your IT systems. And in the end, ask cluster specific questions to a variety of providers. And that's, I think, what you should take out of this yeah. webinar. And many thanks. I think we have a Q&A session. Very happy Thank you, to Alan. get into more. Um, but for now, that's it. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. Very, very good. Very insightful. Um, I think it's great that you could share all your expertise with us. Um, 
So I think now now is the moment of of uh, Q and A. So we will mm -hmm. we'll like to stick to. Uh, Do you want to take hour, let's see. back? I think there's the Q and A there. Is, there's a um, tab below. Shall I? Do you want to read yourself, Olaf? Uh, so sorry. Um... Okay, I can read it. There is a. Um, let's see. First, I go to the to the content question. Yeah. Hi, Olaf. Is there a most accepted or normalized global reference used by most or major provide, providers to define entities or attributes? I guess not. But if yes, could you recommend one? Uh, That's Frederick. Fred. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, um, I think it's a little bit the secret sauce of companies. So um, it's, I, I would say it's um, really depending on the use case. So the question is, is there a proper way of um, defining a structured approach of um, entities, attributes and stuff like this? Um, in e-commerce, um, I think I have seen companies um, using what Amazon is doing or created their own kind of um, structure. Sometimes um, in railway and so, there might be a um, overarching structure that is really pushed forward by some industry um, alliances. That can be the case. So um, yeah, I, I don't know um, something because it's really specific to your use case. So it makes no sense to have um, products um, into your uh, system that are not that you're not selling. Okay, then we have another question. Um, do you know SAP Copilot? What's your opinion on it? Is or in general, using AI for ERP transactions? Mm -hmm. um, I don't know it, to be honest. Um, I think it's something that is working inside um, SAP. Um, I don't know if it's really for a chatbot or conversational AI. Um, ERP transactions, I think it's a different um, area. So, but to be honest, I um, have no okay. experience that yeah well i think i think that did okay i'm not sure if anybody else has um has any more questions otherwise we'll finalize here right um just um Olaf, if you want to stop sharing your your presentation i will share it just um, um okay so well if anybody is interested just uh, drop us an email and we'll put in contact with Olaf. And um, and yeah, and, and many thanks, Olaf. I, mean, I think it, it's, it's very insightful. I think that the whole topic of, of conversational AI is gonna explode. I'm sure it's just a matter of time. Mm. So we will need people like you to drive us to the proper, to the proper direction, right? With the proper direction. So thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, looking forward to, to hearing from you. So thank you very much. and and. Hasta pronto. <laughs> cool. Many thanks also, uh, Pau, to you for uh, giving me the opportunity to present here at Outwise. And again, let me thank um, also uh, to the um, people involved in the background, uh, Patricia, Denis, and others, um, really for making this happen and um, the great work beforehand. Um, many thanks for that as well. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Ciao. Okay. Ciao.